So it's been six months since I started this channel, and in that time, I've learned so much. I've made some dumb mistakes, some really dumb mistakes, but there's no shame there because it's all about learning and growth and making it a little better each time. Hopefully everyone can find a little humor in this, maybe a little wisdom, and for those who may be thinking about starting your own channel as well, this can serve as a roadmap for what to do or what not to do. Let's roll. first and probably the biggest thing that I've learned is just to get started. So this is probably true for most people across the board when starting something new like this, and that is that fear and insecurity is just part of the game. I was of course no exception here, but it came down to this. I wasn't going to let that fear dictate my actions, so I put that first video out there, which was of course terrible, but I just got started. And what I realized after posting that first video is that it's really not that big of a deal. I didn't get any negative comments, some people thought it was cool, but I would say the overwhelming majority really didn't care. It's easy to be hyper focused on what other people think about you when in reality they're probably not even paying attention and this relates to what's referred to in psychology as the spotlight effect where we tend to overestimate the degree to which other people notice us. But also here's this for any critics or haters that you do have out there first off who cares what they think and then second they're probably not doing anything themselves to take a chance and to put themselves out there so again who cares what they think. To paraphrase a quote from Jack Nicholson that I stumbled upon a while back, I don't care what my haters think about me, I don't think about them at all. It's easy to judge something from the outside that you don't actually understand, it's much harder to actually do it. So to reiterate, the first and biggest thing is just to get started, and the law of inertia applies here. It's so much easier to keep going once you've started. So if you can overcome that initial fear and anxiety, that activation energy to just pull the trigger and get started, you then realize that no one really cares, and then that frees you up to keep pushing forward. Thing number two, and this is very important to remember throughout the journey, is that every expert was once a novice. So when you start something new, it's going to suck in the beginning. You're going to suck in the beginning, and that's okay. So I realize that I still have a long way to go, but with what I know now, looking back at my early videos, it's very cringy. But guess what? It's totally fine. I thought about this and I don't think that I'll ever take down my early videos because one, I want to be able to see the progression, but two, I also want others to be able to see that as well. So that way in the future, despite whatever success this channel sees, we can all look back and see that in the beginning, it sucked. Number three is be consistent. And I wouldn't necessarily say that I've learned to be consistent here, but rather that I've reaffirmed its importance. I've talked about this before and spoiler alert, this won't be the last time, but that's because in my opinion, Opinion, consistency over time is the best strategy for success. To quote our former president of the United States, it's huge. And this is true whether you're starting a new exercise regimen, a dietary intervention, or a YouTube channel. So when I first started this channel, I had no idea how to do any of this. If you were to ask any of my friends, they would tell you that I was technologically challenged, but through research and following other successful channels, one common theme that I kept running across is that consistency is key. And honestly, that was a relief to hear because I thought, well, I have no educational background and zero technical skills on this stuff, but what I do have is the discipline to be consistent and to never stop. So I set out to make one video per week with the understanding that it would suck at first, but that it would get better with time, and it has. So here we are 30 videos later, I still have a long way to go, and by comparison to many others, I still know next to nothing, but I continue to do that one video per week, I'm continuously learning and improving, and just like rock and roll superstar Ozzy Osbourne, I ain't never gonna stop. The next thing relates to production quality and equipment. So in the beginning, at least for the most part, equipment really doesn't matter. You could spend a lot of money on equipment in the beginning, and I guess if you have that expendable income, go for it, but it's really not going to make that big of a difference, at least at first. So to put this into perspective, you could give a $10,000 guitar to a novice guitar player, and it's going to sound like crap. Meanwhile, if you give Eddie Van Halen a $50 guitar, he's gonna shred. So first things first, you really should probably develop a basic understanding of the fundamentals in things like generating a topic, title, a thumbnail, scripting, filming, and then editing. You could have all the latest and greatest gear, but if you don't at least have a rudimentary understanding of these other things, then you're just gonna have the most expensive gear setup for crappy videos that no one watches. Or you could be like me, have a cheap setup with okay-ish videos that some people watch. And you can upgrade your gear as you skill up along the way. But when you do start making upgrades, 
Here are a few recommendations. The first thing that you should upgrade is your microphone. And so to paraphrase Ali Abdal, who's a big time YouTuber who will probably never even see this, he says that people will much more readily tolerate poor video quality than poor audio quality. A good example here would be something like a podcast, which may not even have any video at all. So millions of people will tune into a podcast that may not have video, but if the audio quality is bad, no one's gonna listen to it. So upgrade your audio first, and then the second thing would probably be lighting, and that's something that I picked up from Zach Hiley, who's another medical student with the YouTube channel. If you haven't already, after this video, go ahead and check out his channel. So for me personally, I just started out with my iPhone. I didn't have a camera, an external microphone, or any special lighting for the first several videos. My first upgrade was a cheap external mic, which was the Rode Video Micro, and then I later upgraded to the Rode NTG4 Plus with the Zoom 5 external recorder, which was much more expensive, but well worth it in my opinion. I will go ahead and link those in the description if you care to check them out. And then later I got fancy with a couple lights that were still, at least on the spectrum of what you can get, relatively cheap. One thing that I finally learned how to do after upgrading my lighting was color correction, which in retrospect was bass backwards. If you're watching this and you're just starting a YouTube channel, please learn how to color correct before buying a light. With just a little color correction, I could have made my early videos look so much better even without a key light. If you're interested in the lighting setup that I'm currently using, I use the Godox SL60W as my main key light, the GVM 800D as a secondary light, which also in some of my videos that you may have seen adds in that nice blue color to the background. And then these desk lamps that I just grabbed off the shelf at Walmart, I will go ahead and throw those in the description as well if you wanna check them out. And lastly, for my camera upgrades, I actually haven't upgraded my camera yet. So this video that you're watching right now and every other video that I've made so far was shot with my iPhone. Shocked, surprised, impressed, hopefully a little bit at least. I think that the iPhone's actually very impressive in what it can do. And for what I need it for and the level that I'm at, it's working just fine. I do have my sights on a camera once I have the budget for it, but as it turns out, cameras are very expensive. So at least for the time being, the iPhone will work just fine. Moving into the next thing, and that's mistakes that I've made and lessons that I've had to learn the hard way. So the biggest and probably the most annoying mistakes that I've made stem from using battery powered devices and filming with my iPhone. For a few videos, between having no lights and the lighting setup that I have now, I used a couple battery powered lights and the battery life was about an hour, but early on at least, on average, it took me about an hour and a half to film. So obviously the math there didn't work out so well. So in the middle of filming, these batteries would die and the lights would just turn off. So then I had to stop, recharge the batteries, and then resume filming. Very, very annoying. After that, I did of course get an extra set of batteries, which then fixed the problem. But if you're using or plan on using battery powered lights, do yourself a favor and get an extra set of batteries. Another battery related issue that I ran into was the battery running out on my Zoom H5 audio recorder. So I finished shooting the entire video only to find that I had no audio for it. So then I had to go back and reshoot the whole thing. So before you begin shooting, make sure everything's either fully charged or that it has fresh batteries to avoid that pain and frustration. Lastly, well, not lastly, I've made plenty of mistakes, but one of the biggest mistakes that I've made was failing to put my phone in airplane mode. So as I mentioned earlier, I've been using my iPhone to film these videos. And as it turns out that if you're filming with your iPhone and you get a phone call, the video recording will just stop. On two different occasions, I had filmed an entire video only to find out later that a friend had called me about halfway through and the recording had just stopped. Fun fact, same friend both times. You know who you are. So please, for the love of God, if you're filming with your iPhone, put it in airplane mode. The last thing that I wanna talk about here is the iceberg of the grind versus the glory. So I feel like a lot of the time, especially on social media, you just get the highlight reels of someone's life and journey. What you don't tend to see is the daily grind, the blood, the sweat, and tears in building something from scratch, and that's the bottom of the iceberg. You can't see it, but it's there. What you do see is the tip of the iceberg, the success. So I wanna get out in front of this now. So I'm confident that this channel will be successful one day. If nothing else, I know that I have the discipline and consistency to make that happen. It might take one year, it might take 10 years, but we'll get there. But in anticipation of that, whenever it happens, I don't want people to think that it was easy or that it happened overnight. It has been a lot of work. So I started this channel six months ago, and in that time I've made 30 videos that have gotten roughly 4,000 views, and currently I have 150 subscribers. At least early on, it would take me upwards of a week to write, 
plan, shoot, edit, and post a single video because I had no idea what I was doing. And then factor in hours, days, weeks of YouTube videos, tutorials, and online classes to actually learn how to do all of this. The process is a little streamlined now, but it still might take me a whole day or even two to go through the entire process from writing to posting a new video. So you go through the struggle of that entire process and then at least early on, maybe 10 people watch it. And putting in all that work with not much to show for it can be mentally taxing to say the least. And while the process of learning and actually doing this is often a lot of fun, it can also be incredibly frustrating and downright discouraging. So if you're embarking on a journey like this, whether it's starting a YouTube channel, building a business, whatever it is, just realize that it's a marathon and not a sprint, and that you have to be willing to put years of effort in without any return. So to reiterate, for any people that may be watching this video in the future when this channel is considered somewhat successful, just know that it wasn't easy, I put a lot of time, effort, and money into this channel to build it from nothing. I've had and still have a lot of fear, insecurities, and obstacles to overcome. But with that in mind, I want to be clear. I'm not going to quit, and you shouldn't either. If you haven't already, go back and watch some of my earlier videos and then come back and compare it to this one and some of my newer videos. All in all, it's been an incredible journey so far and I've learned so much along the way and I hope you can see that as well. And it's only going to get better, so if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe and follow along in the journey. And if you're sticking around, here's some other videos that you might enjoy.